The final question in the chapter four review for our nuclear physics topic is shown in this slide. In class, we looked at part A and wrote the three equations. In this question for part B, it's the third equation that is of interest to us. We have two helium-3 nuclei fusing to produce an alpha particle or a helium-4 nucleus plus two protons. And per fusion, we also have 12.98 mega electron volts of energy being liberated. Now we're given this information, so there is no need to calculate the mass defect in order to determine energies for this problem. So to solve part B, the most intuitive way I found to solve this is as we began in class to start with 100 grams of helium-3 and work out how many atomic mass units that is. In general, we want to work in atomic mass units. So we take 100 grams and express it in kilograms and divide that by the conversion factor to get 6.024 by 10 to the 25th atomic mass units. From here, we're going to work out the number of helium-3 nuclei available for fusion. And so we need to divide by the mass of a single helium-3 nucleus, which is given in atomic mass units, so our units match. And we have 1.99809 by 10 to the 25th nuclei. So this is the number of nuclei that are going to fuse in the 24 hour period we are given. Now, because it takes two helium-3 nuclei to produce one alpha particle, we need to divide that number by two. And we then know that 9.99 by 10 to the power of 24 alpha particles are produced by 100 grams of helium-3. To get the energy value now, we take that number of alpha particles and multiply by the energy liberated in mega electron volts and then convert that to electron volts by multiplying by the conversion factor and that gives us an energy in joules. The actual power of the station in that time is given by power equals energy divided by time and the time is 24 hours in seconds and then we can conclude that we have 240 megawatts of power being produced by the station.